because our media are totally in the tank for the Democrats, above all else, they refused to cover Biden's obvious deterioration until they had to, right? And they refused to cover the truth about what prompted his dropping out until he himself spilled the beans. What happened was uh, a number of my Democratic colleagues in the House and Senate thought that I was going to hurt them in the races. And I was concerned if I stayed in the race, that would be the topic. You'd be interviewing me about why did Nancy Pelosi say, why did so, and, uh, and I thought it'd be a real distraction. Joining us now, Rod Blagojevich, former Democrat governor of Illinois. Now, Rod, it's great to have you on. The people who claimed that they were saving American democracy pulled off the equivalent of a coup against the sitting president. Unbelievable. The press knew it. They puss pussyfooted around the issue. Instead, they focused on Biden's heroic decision to step aside. So what should the voters tonight, Rod, take away from this, given their obvious efforts to try to demoralize the GOP base as we move closer to the DNC? I think it's very obvious. I think, uh, and you're talking to a Democratic governor, twice elected, the first one to endorse Obama. But today's Democratic Party, the things that they're saying to the voters, don't believe any of it. How could you possibly? Think about how they lied about President Biden's uh, cognitive incapacity. They lied to the American people not about something small, but about something big, about a guy's mental capacity. And this guy has the power to blow up the world with the push of a button. So they don't just lie about little things. They lie about the most important things, the biggest things. And so as we move, move forward in this election campaign, I think it's very clear that the American people should be more than just skeptical. They didn't just lie about Biden's capacity to govern. They're now lying about how they forced him out of the race. Kamala Harris, the vice president, was a co-conspirator in the lies and in the cover-up. They covered up from we the people, the capacity, the mental capacity of the president. She lies when she flip-flops on issues. Just a month ago, when she was the vice presidential candidate, she supported, uh, she opposed fracking. She supported defunding the police. She supported abolishing private health insurance. And she was the border czar who was responsible for allowing tens million to 20 million people to storm into our country. So when they tell us things, I think it's fair to say that we should consider them as lies. And what they ought to do, really, if they want to be honest, the Democratic Party should think about changing the symbol of the party from the jackass, because they're not dumb, to Pinocchio, because they lie. <laughs> well, Pelosi addressed um, the Biden resignation letter um, and what it was about when she was, it was actually when he was going to actually stay in the race. Excuse me. Watch this. I didn't accept the letter as anything but a letter. I mean, I mean, and another, there are some people who were unhappy with the letter. Let me say, that some said that some people were unhappy with the letter. I'll put it in somebody else's mouth. Because it was a, I don't even know, it didn't sound like Joe Biden to me. It really didn't. Um, isn't it odd to cast doubt on that letter, obviously the letter that I'm staying in before the letter, the resignation letter, which obviously also didn't sound like Biden. Yes, you know, uh, Elvis had that historic song, Hound Dog, you ain't nothing but a hound dog crying all the time. They ought to change the words so you ain't nothing but a hound dog lying all the time. When you lie like that all the time, even the people who are part of the lies can't believe the lies because they're not sure whether the one that they're lying for is actually lying to them. And so the fact that she has questions about that letter indicates the fact that even Nancy Pelosi doesn't believe the Democrats. Rod, do you think at this point um, President Trump, who obviously, you know, he won in 2016, no one ever thought he could, 74 or 5 million uh, votes uh, last time around. Do you think it would be best for him now to do those events? You know, rallies are great, but those events where he goes into Chicago, go to Oakland, where I believe Kamala Harris was born, get, get to the people there. Th those policies have destroyed the lives of middle class and low income people, destroyed them. And stand with those people. I would, if I were, if I were running. I mean, I, that's what I'd do. I think that's a great idea. Look, here in Chicago, crime is 
as it's been for the past many years uh, at record levels. It disproportionately impacts people of color, particularly black people in the black neighborhoods. I've had a lot of experience uh, in the black community as a governor. We've got a lot of votes there. My time in prison for lies, by the way, with some of the black guys who really appreciated Trump's honesty and authenticity. So, no, I think it's really important for him to come into the inner cities of those places where the Democrats have ruined things. And the people that they say they're on the side of, well, here again, it's another lie. And the fact that they say they're on the side of black people, they just do just enough so they can say something. And in the old days, when the Republican Party was all about corporate country club Republicans as opposed to the working class party Trump has turned it into, they can get away with saying that. But Trump has reached out to the black community. He should do a lot more of that. His record on criminal justice reform is meaningful. Biden was the one who incarcerated all kinds of first-time nonviolent drug offenders for all these long sentences, creating what the author Michelle Alexander called the new Jim Crow. So he's got real opportunity in Detroit. Detroit, in Philadelphia, in Pittsburgh, in Cleveland, in Atlanta, and in places like Chicago to highlight precisely what happens to the communities the Democrats say they're for when the Democrats are the ones who've made it bad for the very people they say they're fighting yeah. for. It's beautiful to see him in, in those environments. He's so great with people one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I mean, uh, again, rallies are rallies, and they're great, but that, that, that personal touch with people when he did it with the black pastors and New York and the small, I love those events. I mean, that's just the way I am, though. I love those. I love seeing him in those events. Rod, great to see you. Thank you so much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.